So we got a special guest here today, uh, Joey Mantia, our, our friend and business partner. And we thought it'd be really cool to catch up after the games and also uh, announce a pretty big uh, announcement for NSC, which is uh, we have some outdoor wheels. So welcome, guys. What's up, guys? Yo, yo. <laughs> Joe, ca catch us up, man. We haven't really had a, a ton of time to talk. You were just telling us before the podcast started that uh, you've been lazy for the last month and a half. Yeah, this is the first time in my entire life I've taken like an extended hiatus from skating or any kind of working out. And uh, I think I would be going insane if I wasn't working full time on my house. But I took a little vacation, went to Europe, visited Belgium, hit Rome. And uh, it might have been actually like technically the first real vacation i've ever had in my entire life where i didn't bring my skates and didn't <laughs> do anything but hang out and be a tourist so that was nice but yeah it's getting uh i'm getting a little anxious to get back back in the in the gym get on my skates and just do some summer training and get back at it nice i literally was going to ask that when you said that uh you went to europe i for all the years i've known you i don't think i can think of a single time you've ever gone somewhere without your skates yeah, it's uh, it's it's weird because every year, all my teammates go on vacation, pretty much as soon as the season's over, and I'm either doing inline camps or back to training, and I just, it's the first time where I was like, you know, I need to give my back a rest because my back was bothering me at the Olympics, and it's kind of one of those things that could make or break me for my career at this point, uh, something that could definitely stop me from uh, trying to chase the the next quad or at least the next couple of years or whatever it may be, but. I uh, decided, yeah, it's it's time to just take a breather and not worry about skating at all. And it's nice because now I actually have a real uh, desire to get my skates back on again. It doesn't seem like a hassle. It doesn't seem like uh, like a chore. It's 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 going to be a lot more fun, I think, having having the time off. Are you so as far as getting your skates back on? Are you talking about inlines or, or both? Both. I do want to do a lot more inline this year. I've the last couple of years I've I've pretty much put my inline skates on the back burner because I wanted to go full ice and really just try to get my technique dialed in as much as possible before the Olympics. And I, I think it was a good move, but I do miss being on, on my inline skates. It's, it's, uh, it's definitely closer to my heart than ice skating. I still don't love ice skating. It's crazy to say that <laughs> after being an ice skater for 10 years, but at least you um, admit it. Uh, there's parts of ice skating that I do love, uh, but as a whole, man, I really, I really miss inline skating. Yeah, uh, you know, walk us through uh, some of the stuff with the games. Um, you know, uh, this year seemed kind of bizarre with uh, all the, the conditions with COVID and everything else, and you've got to do previous games. Did that, uh, did that play into anything as an athlete? Was it weird? Like, Yeah, this like the first Olympics was crazy because in Sochi 2014, it's your first experience, at least it was for me, and – Everything is just like, oh my God, this is amazing. This is the coolest thing ever. I'm an Olympian. And the nerves really hit hard because it's your first time. First uh, time being on TV with that kind of exposure. And even though I've competed at many world championships and uh, competed internationally, been on TV, had lots of interviews, it's just different with the Olympics. It's, it's a different kind of pressure. And uh, I don't think I was quite ready yet in terms of experience on the ice uh, in Sochi. Then Pyeongchang... I felt like I was pretty close. I wasn't really 100% on my skates. Uh, I was getting closer and closer and closer over that quad. Um, and I, I just missed, I was fourth place twice at that games. And then uh, in, in, um, in Beijing, I felt like I was ready to win. And unfortunately my back was just not giving me what I needed to have. And uh, it's kind of like been a nagging issue for me with my with my skating in the last, I don't know, three or four years, I'm doing a lot of prehab, a lot of stuff to keep my back just usable, basically, um, stretching and, and rolling out and just a, a lot of different uh, techniques to try to keep <laughs> keep those muscles from getting too tight. It's just something I think, I probably have a little bit of arthritis going on in my back, just being in the skating position for 25, 26 years, my, basically my entire life, I've been in that crunch position, some sort of skating. And uh, it's just finally caught up to me. And uh, I think moving forward, I'll probably focus on just like the mass start, maybe a little bit of TP stuff, but the 1500, the time trial stuff, which I never really loved in the first place about long track. I'm probably going to hang that up and, 
and just do more pack style racing on, on long track. But with the Olympics uh, being in Beijing and having the whole COVID situation, it was really weird. All the, all the volunteers were like in full body hazmat suits all the time. <laughs> they were spraying alcohol on everything 24 seven. So much so that the paint was like dripping off of the walls in some places. Cause they just, <laughs> they never stopped spraying sanitizer. I think for China, it was more about making sure there was no COVID outbreak because the PR on that would be terrible to have the Olympics and oh, yeah. crazy COVID outbreak and then they cancel the Olympics or whatever. So they spent a lot of time and effort making sure that it was COVID safe. And it definitely was. Um, but I think there was some, some parts of it that weren't quite as, um, what's the word I'm looking for, as prestigious maybe. Uh, yeah. as, as Sochi or Pyeongchang were. And that could just be because the, the public aspect and having a crowd and, and that changes everything so much. But uh, it, it was a really weird vibe having so many COVID restrictions. From a, from a viewer standpoint, uh, you know, with us wanting to be fans of all of this, I think the weirdest thing for me was we're in a place now where people really don't have cable anymore. So you kind of patch together all your different ways that you want to do your entertainment. And uh, during tryouts, I was just flat out uh, cheating to watch you do the tryouts. I, I went on to NBC and they did like a little 30 minute uh, live stream. And I figured out as long as you logged out and logged back in, the 30 minutes would restart. And, and uh, then I stole my little sister's uh, Peacock passwords to watch this the guy. games. and. Brandon this guy makes me. more money than anybody I know. Literally more than money. And he won't pay <laughs> probably $30 to watch the thing. <laughs> Come on, dude. It's all about the value. So, <laughs> That's how the rich stay rich. <laughs> yeah, whatever. So, so time zones were freaking weird. Um, Brandon would text me and be like, hey, these guys are up. And I remember before your mass start, was it like midnight or one o'clock our no, time? Dude, yeah, I think those were, yeah, some of them were like two yeah. in the morning. Yeah, it was funky. And, um, I remember you coming around the last corner and I'm just cussing at the screen. Cause I'm like, dude, this guy's got it. I Cause know. I know your, I know your stretch. And then I saw that little slip and I'm like, okay, he can still recover. And coming down, it was like watching the Kentucky Derby, like coming down to the line. I'm like, did he get it? Did he get it? And it was just, it was, dude. it was more so the push in the back. Wasn't it in the corner? Yeah. There was a few things that happened there. Um, I did have, I just had a lot of speed coming into the turn. And I didn't know what to do with it. I, uh, ice is interesting because you, the second you lose your speed, you're 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 done. So you try to deviate or try not to transfer your speed to somebody else. Um, and I, I just had like a little slip, and I hadn't really been feeling totally comfortable in the turns uh, at that speed anyway. So uh, yeah, a little slip. I I maybe transferred a little bit of my speed to the person in front of me. And then coming to the finish line, I uh, got grabbed by the Korean and we tried to protest it, but we never filed like a formal protest. And um, right now we're still trying to protest. I think it's still a process that's ongoing, but uh, oh it, I'm, I'm not very optimistic at all about that because, <laughs> you know, it's pretty much said and done. It's months later. It's uh, it's uh, and realistically, that's not going to change my life at all. You know, like I, I have a medal. It's super nice. And I have something that personifies all my hard work and and dedication for this Olympic journey. And um, I, in my heart, I believe that I should have had a bronze medal at least in the for sure. start. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. And uh, yeah, to your point about the viewership thing, it's interesting because I feel like mm, 12 years ago and, and before that, it was pretty common just to have the Olympics showing on your TV all the time. You come home, you turn on NBC, mm -hmm. boom, you can watch the Olympics. It's on, the, the family gathers around. And that that's kind of like going away. That, that era is going away. And I know NBC lost quite a bit of money in the last two Olympics because I feel like they try to keep the same structure. Um, and I, I, I feel like uh, they thought that people were going to just hunt down the Olympics and pay for the Olympics. And w one with it being most of the viewership or most, most of the races going on at like three in the morning, that's obviously not going to happen. And, and then there's not like a, a really easy way for people to watch. Everybody I've talked to was like, yeah, I didn't see much of the Olympics. I didn't know where to watch, how to watch it. It was like really confusing. So with everything moving to streaming, uh, it's, un it's unfortunate because uh, one, if it's not convenient, I don't feel like people are going to go out of their way to watch the Olympics. 
uh, even if they are fans, it's you have to kind of know somebody and be wanting to watch a specific race like you guys mm-hmm. uh, to make that happen. And uh, I wish they would do something, maybe partner with Facebook or some some platform like that where it's just free to view. You just open up your Facebook and boom, it's there. You know, that would make way more sense to me. And I don't know what NBC is going to do moving forward, but I do know it is an issue right now. And I don't have a lot of uh, details and in the inner workings of what's going on. I just heard through the grapevine that they... They they did uh, not do so well with the with the ad revenue for the games, the last two games. Yeah, well, I forgot. The, I don't know if I told you this, but um, I found this like offshore betting site, and before oh, yeah. and before your pursuit, I knew that you were arrested, and I was like, and and you guys were like the underdog or something. Yeah. So I put in like I you could only do it with Bitcoin. So I'm like I'm like all right, cool. Like here's a couple hundred bucks, dude, and it was like a thousand dollars or something for you guys winning that and it was the easiest win of all time nice 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 (laughs) it was awesome that was one of the things i was going to ask you guys too because i i remember watching um i don't remember if it was the heats or whatever and i was like this is genius they're not trading leads oh yeah the like were people doing that before this games or are you guys the first to it like i don't remember seeing that i always remember people switching leads and i was like this is yeah a no way we've been strategy. practicing like that for a while for about three or four years and last year at the world championships norway did it i don't know if they heard that we were practicing it or whatever but uh they did it and they won the world cup or they won the world cups before the world championships or something like that uh two seasons ago in the bubble when we had the covid bubble and um they won and everybody's like okay that's the strategy. And interestingly enough, the Dutch were like, we don't need to push to win. Like they thought they were so good that they could just do whatever strategy. But the reality is when you have three good guys, you don't have to have no one of them has to be the best in the world. You could have three guys that are just pretty good and you can win the team pursuit. And that's what we had. I think, um, I think we had four guys that any combination of the four could have, could have won. And um, unfortunately, we, what Russia did at the Olympics in the second round was unbelievable. They went like seven seconds faster or something like that in the second round than they did in the final. So huh. to make it to Damn. the gold medal round, they had the race of their life. And our guys, they skated the second fastest one we skated all year, I think. Second or third fastest, and it's at sea level. So it wasn't like our guys skated a slow race. Uh, they, the Russians just did something absolutely insane to get into that gold medal round. Otherwise, I think we had a good shot at actually winning the gold. Yeah. Um, because it took a little bit of wind out of everybody's sails when we didn't make it to the gold medal round, and then everybody's kind of down and trying to regroup, and I wasn't feeling particularly great. Um, but, you know, we, we pulled it out for a bronze. But uh, it's it's unfortunate because we, we knew we had what it took to, to win that race, and it just it's one of those things where – it's the Olympics. Anything can happen. And Russia just showed up and uh, they laid one down in the second round. Wow. Well, let's uh, let's shift gears here and, and uh, let's kind of talk about some of the, the business stuff with NSC and, you know, with uh, Joe uh, getting some time to put the inlines back and, and uh, having some time before the next games. We're, we're obviously going to lean on him for some of his expertise as well. And um, you know, Brandon, I, and, and several of the other in the crew have been working on an outdoor wheel for longer than I can. A long time. <laughs> way too yeah. long of a time. And, and uh, getting that right is a very difficult process. And we've gone through variation after variation after variation of wheels. And we finally have gotten ourselves down to two variations that we're, we're proud of and we think are production wheels. The problem is... We can't get our dang crew to agree on which one's better. Yep, <laughs> which is which is super unique because normally it's you're like, hey, yeah, this is definitive. You yeah, know, that's the best the wheel. And the cool thing about the two that we've kind of unanimously picked out, they're different. They're diff. They're way. They're different. They're a lot different from each other. It's not like oh, this one you know has a little more pop or this one grips a little bit better. They're just completely different. Yeah, I've never been so uh, wishy washy before. Like I'm like, this is the one. And then I'll go skate the other one. I'm like, oh, actually, I changed my mind. And, <laughs> mm-hmm. and it's, it's been a real uh, challenge for us. And so, uh, one, we're, we're uh, obviously leaning on Joe to get some of his opinion here. And we just uh, shipped him out the variations. Um, and, and he's going to give us our feedback. But the big surprise for you guys is that 
we actually ordered a uh, limited amount of both sets of wheels and we're going to ask you guys to help us. And, and this is going to be the first time in the, in the skating industry that anyone's ever leaned on the consumer for the, the R and D, mm -hmm. which is it's super important because you know, they can easily get influenced from top level skaters and it trickles down and kids are like, oh, I don't know if these are that good, but that guy's skating on them. That's I'm how gonna, it always works. I'm yeah, going to try sure. People now always say they back. have their opinion, but man, uh, they pretty much just follow whatever the, the exactly. leader of the team is doing or says, and that's how it's always been. <laughs> we got another my, special guest yeah, in we, here. Hendrix, uh, my son just walked Bring in. Bring him course. in. Henny, come here. Hey, He's going to be we're, testing we're wheels too. Right now. Hey, you want to say hi to Joe? Say what's up, man. No, you don't even want to say <laughs> hi. <laughs> your sushi. <laughs> we ate all of your sushi. Hey, bub, we're on camera right now. Do you want to grab... No, yeah, you want to grab Hendrix real quick so we can finish here? Henny, you got to go with mom. <laughs> Brandon ate your I sushi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Dude. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> There's a little bit left. This is why I don't have kids. The, tr the truth Fine is we example. both ate it. That's, that's the messed up part is we both ate a sushi. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That was way better. We blame that on bread. And so, so Joe, we'll uh, sidetrack here real quick. So, uh, Henny started skating, and uh, dude, he's getting he's getting good. Yeah, he's getting good. The other night, I couldn't go backwards. I had to turn around and pace line, and he he was chasing us down. <laughs> so, uh, so back to back to this wheel uh, thing here. Um, we you know we got two variations. The variations we think are special, um, and we really need the consumer to help, but. Uh, because we're limited quantity, we're looking for more advanced skaters. We're, we're not asking for pros to test this, right? Like if you're a pro and you want to test this, fantastic. We're, we're, we'll let you do that. But we're not looking for beginner skaters and we're not looking for the best of the best. We, we want the real consumer, that middle of the pack skater, the one you guys, the ones that are buying all the wheels. We want, we want to hear from you what you think about it. So here's the deal. Um, we're going to sell them discounted. Uh, for what the typical price is when you purchase them you have to buy both of them I'm actually holding one of the wheels they're labeled 1371 and 1373 these are the true prototype numbers this is how we do prototyping you just keep writing as you go down the line and uh, what we're looking for is that when you guys buy these um, you're going to give us the real feedback right and and if you do video that would be amazing if if you're in comfortable video, maybe just super detailed, uh, you know, uh, journal about it. And in a perfect world, you give us feedback right after you skate them. So the initial feedback, maybe a week after, and then maybe two weeks after. And if you actually go through this process as a thank you, we'll give you, uh, you know, like a $50 um, discount code for either the production wheels that we do or the next set of uh, Bigfoot wheels that mm -hmm. you guys buy. And it's super, it's super important, too. We want um, the most honest feedback, too. I think that's super important. We don't want anything sugar-coated. You know, if you don't like them, that's, that's totally fine. But we, all, we, we don't want people to, to hype them up, kind of gas up the wheels if you truly don't like them. Man, yeah. I can tell you, my entire inline career, there was always people looking to get free wheels from my sponsor who were just gassing them up. I'm telling them, like, look, the wheels are, like, okay, but this is what you need to fix. You know, this, this, whatever, a list of things. Well, everybody says they're great. Well, I don't yeah. know why we would change. I'm, like, wanting to shoot myself in the head my entire career because I'm, like, <laughs> look, just make the changes, please. Like, obviously, they're going to tell you everything you want to hear because they want you to give them more free wheels. Exactly. Um, exactly. And that's obviously not the case here. So, the... Uh, <laughs> The, 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 the we need everybody to be candorous if that's what is that how you say candorous candor i don't know have a little candor. i'm not that smart joe uh, whatever. <laughs> you're gonna have to google that one for me <laughs> but yeah just be honest like right uh for once for once in the consumer life of, of speed skating <laughs> well it, it the, i think the great part is um they're invested into it, right? And, th and that's one of the reasons why we didn't want to just throw the wheels out. I've never gotten feedback, uh, bad feedback from someone I gave free wheels yeah, to. Yeah, for so sure. That's, that's a problem. Yeah, it's just never. impossible to get bad. They just like, no, I'll tell you awesome. And then, you you know, everything awesome, you keep giving free wheels. So right. when you pay for it, you tend to be a little bit more honest, right? Mm -hmm. That's how Yelp works. <laughs> like, yeah. I just paid for this food and it sucks. Mm -hmm. You yeah, only yeah, see yeah. the bad reviews. <laughs> yeah. <That> Amazon review. <laughs> yep. 
So, um, but yeah, uh, 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 the, the wheel, the thing that was really important for us is that we really like that matter profile. Um, and for someone who skates indoors and outdoors, you're already accustomed to the Bigfoot wheel. And uh, between the three of us, God, the amount of testing we've done of inline product is, is obnoxious. And I can tell you that when you go from one manufacturer to another, the hardest thing is getting used to their profile. Mm -hmm. It is so funky. So that's why we want the initial reaction, because if you're already skating on a different manufacturer's product and you go to ours, it's very unlikely that you adjust quickly. So the initial reaction is important to us. Is it easy to transition from profile to profile? Mm -hmm. And then we want the, the week long one and then the two week long one, the one that you got some serious time on. And so I think that will give us real feedback. And then you guys, what we're gonna do with this feedback is if there's a clear general consensus on this, that's the wheel we're going to go into production with. And so you're essentially just helping us pick the production wheel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, we're, we're coin flipping it with all the data that we, we get from all these reviews. Um, but no, yeah, it's, it's same thing, kind of like when you're putting on a new profile, for me at least, I've never put on a different wheel. I've been like, oh my God, this is so much better. I mean, unless we're indoors, that's a little bit different. But outdoors, I'm like, oh, I don't know, these you know feel a little bit squirrely in the corner. Or, you know, I don't like the roll, I don't like the turn. But until we actually skate on them with a group and a pack, I think that's another thing you know I want people to write down too is like how do you feel in a pack? Don't just go out and skate by yourself because I want you guys to feel the roll between different wheels. I want you to feel, you know, slam into a corner with a big group and feel you know what that grip feels like. Different temperatures. And then if you can, you know what we try to do in our group is to not really talk about it till everyone's had a turn to um, develop their own opinion. Because the worst part about it, again, kind of like we, we just spoke about, is top guy, you know, trickles down, like, these are great. Yeah. <laughs> or Joey, these Joey tells us he likes it, and we're like, these are the best wheels <laughs> yeah, ever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, so what we're going to do here for this to work is if you're an advanced skater, and we're looking for all ages, right? So, like, if you're, if, if you're a good young skater or if you're a good older skater, uh, we, we, want, we want the consumer uh, spread, right? Uh, go ahead and email us at uh, info at ProNSC.com, and we're going to do kind of an application process for this. Just give us a quick summary of how long you've been skating for, just some basic accomplishments, just so we can establish that we have someone who can really test a wheel. Um, and then uh, we'll reply and give you kind of the parameters of what we're looking for during this testing. And then, uh, guys, we I mean, this would just be awesome for us to get that feedback. So, uh We'd love for you guys to, to participate. In and this. then we have what a hundred pairs. Yeah, so we have two hundred sets. But since you have to buy both sets because we need you to compare the wheels to each other, essentially we're allowing a hundred people to participate in this. Sweet. So, Joe, anything you want to add? Be transparent. Don't lie to us. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Awesome. Well, hey, Joe, thanks for for taking the time. I know you're. Uh, well, I guess you're not busy right now. <laughs> Normally, you're very uh, busy. So uh, thanks for taking the time for us. And, and uh, yeah, I, I know the skating community is really looking for you coming back. And you got a clinic coming up, right, in, uh, in May? Yeah, I'm going to Brazil and, uh, you know, teach for a few days and have a little vacation and then back here for summer training. Okay. Are you going to do anything in, in the States? Uh, a, lot, a lot of our listeners are going to be in the States and I'm sure people would love to get an opportunity to, to learn from you. Yeah. The way my camps usually work is somebody random just reaches out on a whim. Hey, will you do a camp? And I'm always like, yep. And I just go to a rink and do a camp. And that's kind of how they get set up. It's never, <laughs> it's wild. Like, uh, I've done the, the craziest, uh, like I've been, you know, to going to Brazil, I've been to Columbia, I've done all that, but then I've also done like little rinks in Indiana or little rinks yeah. all over the, the country. So it's just a matter of somebody reaching out um, to either you at NSC and forwarded, forwarding that to me or uh, directly to me um, on Instagram or whatever. And then if yeah. it works out, then it works out. But um, yeah, I usually do a few a year. And uh, this Brazilian camp will be the first one. And then after that, I don't know what I'm going to do. So, so Perfect. Yeah. So, so coaches, if you guys are listening and, and – uh, you know, you, you got a group that uh, would love to learn from Joe. Either either reach out to us at info at ProNSC.com uh, or find Joe on Instagram and reach out to him. So whatever's easier for you. Cool. Awesome. All right, guys. Thanks, we'll talk, Joe. We'll talk soon. Oh, 
Last thing before we, we sign off, NSC 34 at uh, Indoor Nationals, uh, July 17th. And so uh, the rumor is, and, and we're not going to promise this yet, but it sounds Jeez. like Aaron Jackson might be racing. So Ooh. She'll be racing. <laughs> she'll be there. What can't but, she do? <laughs> if, if she's not meeting with the president, she'll be there Dude, racing. So right? we, we just so we don't know if some so important good. calls could happen. So good at skating. Every type of skating. Every type of skating. She <laughs> might be it. doing derby too while she's yeah, there and it is it's figuring everything else. what that girl can do. Exactly. All right, guys, we'll talk soon. Cool. Later. Later.